Hello everyone, my name is Cyber Prime, and welcome back to Mass Effect, and as you can see, this is not live. Um, I've kind of, uh, we're probably not going to be doing as many live episodes, if any live episodes, uh, after this. Mainly because, um, I kind of just want the opportunity to edit it if I ever need to, and there's kind of a little bit less stress. But I will be record I will be doing more live streams, um, on YouTube in the future, and I... Uh, I do uh, live streams regular, well, once a week on Twitch, but uh, that may become more regular. We regular, we will have to see. But uh, yeah, I'm Cyber Prime. I can't remember if I introduced myself. I always forget that for some reason. And we're doing this side quest. I can't remember exactly what's going here. I think there's a scientist there in need. Where Maybe. Is everybody? Yeah. Where is everybody? Can we go in here? Oh, we can. Uh, open. According to these data logs, the survey team unearthed some kind of alien technology. Oh. Yes, we should head to the excavation site then. Okay. Uh, square, X, circle, square. Nice. Uh, take all, I guess. Uh, right, I'm just gonna check around the other one, just in case. I don't think I can use any of these. I'm assuming I can't look at this. Although this is a vehicle, apparently. I think this is like a truck. It is like a tr Holy shit, you would need to be... No, there might actually be just enough space for a person. Actually, I might be, I might be wrong. But, uh, let's go back here. There is still an X on the map. Um, I guess I'll take that. I don't really know what all those things are yet, but um... Oh my god, Garrus I think is my favorite character so far. His helmet, like his design is fucking phenomenal and his character is badass. I like Rex as well. No, I say this all the time, but I fucking love these characters. Like, so much. Even Caden and um, Ashley, like they haven't done probably as much kind of unique stuff, but um, Caden's there since the beginning, so he's kind of like an old friend, I guess, or at least comrade Shepard. And then we met Ashley, and we saved her, so. Oh, okay. This looks ominous. Uh, huh. Redeploying. This may be a bad idea to go inside an alien remains. Or maybe not remains, but an alien structure anyway oh we're actually going inside okay okay this might oh we don't have to wear our helmets oxygen sealed apparently wait is there water flowing oh there is water flowing down okay slightly strange that's one thing these map the, the all of the planets that you can go to so far actually have stuff to do on them and i know that might sound stupid but like each planet so far has actual kind of Maybe not narrative, but like... Oh fuck, it's these guys- Oh my god, there's a lot of you. Um... Right. Uh, can you come in here? I don't think you can come in here. Oh, I'm very wrong, I'm very wrong, I'm very wrong. Shit. Right. Shit, how do I change my weapon again? Uh, shit, I can't remember how I do my abilities either. I completely forgot how to play this game. Uh, Rally round. Fuck, 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 please don't kill my teammates. Shit. Okay, how do I actually com- Wait, I can't let Garrus die. No, hang on. I need to wait until- I don't I've know. Seen this before, machine cultists. The survey team must have unearthed some alien technology that turned them into okay. mindless fanatics. Whatever right. I found, it's long gone now. Oh, I can choose. Oh, interesting. I just need to remember which I uh, 
leveled up for each person. Is this an assault rifle? Ah, it is. Okay, cool. Right, but where are my abilities again? Oh! I don't know what that does. <laughs> Long burst of assault rifle without overheating. Shield boost recharge. Sabotage overheats nearby enemy weapons and burns them for minor damage. Temporarily disables enemy biotics and tech within a certain radius. Damages all enemies and objects, makes them more vulnerable. Recharges talents so they can be used immediately. Throw your enemies and objects in a mass barrier. Uh, contain a target in a mass effect shield that holds them in place but also makes them immune to damage. That sounds strange. Um, oh, unless you can put on your teammates to save them. Oh, wait, that's your abilities and these are mine. Okay, I understand now. So that's why you should focus on one person to kind of get one thing and then him have... Ah, okay, this game is very smart, okay. Damage nearby shield. I just need to remember what I focus each character on. Cool, okay, well, there isn't really anything I can do, so... Uh, I have also forgotten the uh, swap weapon button. Oh, yeah, L1, okay. Cool. That's a pistol, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Right. Begin the manual override. Those guys, I uh, clicked the wrong button. Okay, cool. It doesn't lock you out permanently. That is good to know. But these guys are... are they're not the Geth. They are the... Um, uh, squad, no, it's equipment. Uh, they're not actually the guests, they are the people that the guests turn people into, I think, or something like that. Um, I guess I'll swap that. Um, pistol, that is the exact same. Uh, maybe if uh, Kaiden might want that. Alenko, it's a cool second name. Yeah, we'll give you that. Um, that's the exact same. Uh, give you that sniper rifle, Omni Tool. Media. Oh, it's a Krogan. Oh, I can actually give that to. Um, ah, interesting. Okay. Um, I think there's no real reason to keep that one, so, yeah. Uh... Wait, did I just swap that off and now I'm giving him the exact same thing again? I, I could be wrong, I may have read that wrong, but uh, either way, okay, cool, we have our heading. Here we go! Dude. Holy shit, we have a lot of side quests to do. But this must be a geth artifact then somehow because the geth used spikes to turn the people into that before so that'll be my main guess do 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 uh, open uh I'll reduce those to Omnidrill I don't think either of those are incredibly important to me uh, but maybe I, I could be very wrong. <laughs> uh, square, circle, square, square. Uh, I will take all of those though. Now wait, just let me check. Is that armor better for me? Uh, do do do. Oh, it doesn't look any different, really. I was kind of hoping it would. Uh... Oh. Oh, it does! Oh, shit! Okay, that actually looks quite cool. No, wait, how do I... I can't make my guy spin around. Oh, okay, that's that's disappointing. Uh, disappointing. Oh, I can upgrade it. Oh! Um, installing my increased mass, providing protection against because of force by explosions, high impact ammo, biotic attacks, such as lift or throw. Wait, I can get thrown? Uh, the rate of which come to can, can be your pleasures. Yeah, I'll do that one. Nice! Um, I might as well give you all armor upgrades. 
just in case. But this is cool. Damn, this is like Cyber Prime colors and everything. It still looks vaguely like a wetsuit, but it looks slightly more armored than before, so I'm happy. Um, right, can we actually look at anything in here? Can I... Can I examine you? No? I feel like this may be a... Oh no, okay. Well, I guess we'll just keep going this way. Uh, they're probably explosive. Whoa, okay, wait a minute. Did that work? I really hope that did a cool thing. Uh, fuck, that's not what I want to do. Uh, shit. What does this do? Yeah. Okay, I really hope I don't kill Garrus. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, why are there so many? Why are there so many? Oh shit, this is not good, this is not good at all. Fucking hell. Jeez. Please. That accounts for all the Exogen survey team. They were converted into cybernetic husks by devices similar to those used on the Geth and Eden Prime. How they came to be buried on the frontier world so far from Geth territory is a mystery. So wait, is that the side quest over? Really? Take out those hostiles. I think we got them, Garrus. Don't worry. No, there's got to be more to explore here. I refuse to believe that that's it. Okay, can I... If I oh, see, I can open this. Oh, wait, here's all the spiky things that turn them into them. Interesting. Right! Begin the manual override. X, square, 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 triangle, triangle. Very nice. Was this lore? Ooh, weapons. I will take them all. But how did the Geth stuff get all the way out here? That is what I want to know. I don't think I need to heal Garrus because, um... Pretty sure we killed everyone. But, uh, this could be wrong. There could be more in here, so... No. Can you destroy these? No. Why are there explody things in here, though? I don't really like that. Uh, take all. Okay, I think we can go now, then. Well, that was an interesting side quest, but I'm curious as to... I wonder if there will be an explanation for how um, they kind of get the stuff got over here. Because this is a long way from their home, I'm pretty sure is what they said. But also, what the hell is that in there? I guess I'll never know. <laughs> but yeah, cool, I guess we just go back to the Mako and then we just return to the ship. ba da la da ba da da la da 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 Oh wait, I don't think I can do it from here already, can I? Map? No, I have to get outside. Okay. That makes sense, though. Do do do. But yeah, our shepherd is looking pretty snazzy now. I didn't realize, I thought like... Where's Kaiden? Oh, there he is. <laughs> um, I thought like the armor was kind of like a... Um, kind of like how it works in Avengers, I guess. So it wasn't really... Um, What's the word? It was just, it wasn't cosmetic, it was just, uh, kind of stats, but obviously I'm wrong about that, which is very good. <laughs> uh, map. And return to the Normandy. I wonder why it's called Normandy as well. I, I know, like, historical, but, um, I wonder why they chose Normandy. Um, as the name. It, or, like, that particular thing as its namesake, I'm assuming. Unless there's just one for, like, all the kind of different places on Earth, and then that's why they named the ships, and this just happened to coincide with a, a thingy. Uh, huh, well, I think we explored everything else here, didn't we? Driven Nagu... Yeah, I think so. I remember the name of Gecko, anyway. Right, well, I am walking around, so apologize. I, I apologize for just eat that real quick. Now, where do we go? So that's a mission. Actually, I think all of them are main missions. Um... Let me just see what the side quests are. The journal. That is the main things. I really hope they're not like time 
things. <laughs> so the re because we're like taking our sweet ass time to get them, they're gonna like be screwed. I hope not. Oh, we have only like one more of these to do. Um, fanatical biotics in the Hades Gamma Cluster have kidnapped the chairman of the Parliament Subcommittee on tra Transhuman Studies, Transhuman Studies, and are holed up in a derelict freighter in the Farinata system. Whoa, we get to go on like a fucking freighter ship? That's fucking cool. Okay. Uh, can I track this? No. Okay, well, the Farinata or something. Fer, 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 needy. Fernado. Fer, 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 Oh, wait, 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 wait. There's another place. Oh, wait, shit, this is actually here. Fuck, did I miss any of the other one? any of the other ones then? Um, this is probably the ship. Yeah, okay. Um, now there should be more. Yes, I just wish to survey. Uh, Nepnu. With a rare combination of features, Nepnu is a particular interest to the scientific community. Nepnu is a small terrestrial planet with thin, thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and krypton. As with all worlds of Farinata, its surface is scorching hot. The crust mainly consists of silicates with, uh, laced with iron. Interesting. Uh, you just see port thorium. I'm assuming there's no reason not to scan these as soon as you find them. I'm assuming there's no reason to wait. I can't think of any if there are, uh, but like... A Juntoma. A Juntoma is a small, broiling terrestrial world. This thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and ethane is being steadily blown off by the powerful solar wind from the star Farinetta. The surface is scorching hot and mainly composed of sulfur with deposits of copper. Its density is low enough to leave the world tidally locked to Farin Farin Farinata, yeah. The Alliance Defense Data Network notes that several ships have been spotted cruising near the Jun Juntima with transponders turned off. While an Alliance patrol attempted to pursuit of one, the un unidentified vessel rabbited to FTL. Its trail was lost when it obscured its light trace in the confusion of signals along the An Anansi Ishtar shipping lane. Okay, well that could be the thing we're going for now. Scans of Juntoma revealed a derelict freighter in mid-stage orbital decay. Your salvage team boarded the vessel and determined that it had been attacked by raiders. There was little of value still on board, but the team did find a protein data disk. I fucking love this. Like, the fact that, like, your team, your ship has, like, a team that does stuff, and it's just cool that you're not actually doing everything. I, lo I love this kind of stuff. Um, Tunshagun. Tunshagun is a hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of chlorine and nitrogen in its atmosphere. It has an unusually small number of moons for gas giant, a mere seven. This is no doubt due to the star Farinetta capturing the majority of the mass during the nebular collapse that created the system. Interesting. Right, well I guess we're going to MSV Ontario. The Ontario is a Kowloon class modular conveyor of human design. Configured for mixed freight and passenger hauling, it is making a hard burn for the cover of an asteroid cluster. Uh, right, it's got a private owner from the Citadel, I think is what that read. Um, I didn't really look into it, I probably should have. Uh, okay, who will we bring this time? Let's bring... Ashley, that's not what I meant to do, Ashley and Rex. Yeah, we'll try this team. I'm pretty sure this is the exact same. Did I bring you both when I was going into the club as well? I think. Um, okay, well, we probably should have our weapons at the ready, but first I'm going to see if I can give... Wait, oh, yeah, that's not what I wanted. Equipment. Uh, do, do, do. Wait, hang on. I can, might have a better weapon for you, actually. Uh, let's try that. They're both the exact same, so I can get rid of one... And then equip the other. Uh, there is nothing there for you. No. Do 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 do. I don't think I need two of them, so I'll get rid of those. Even though I'm not actually going to um, equip either of those on you, then I can get rid of these. Avenger and the Lancer. No. Onyx. Is the exact same. Okay, cool. Uh, where are you then, my dude? Um, what does this look like? Yeah, I'm gonna keep your medium armor. I don't really see any. 
What is the benefits of that armor? There isn't really any. Yeah, there's no, there's like no benefits for any of these. Okay, well, either way, uh, I guess uh, I am going to use this, I believe, and then I can get rid of one of these. Do 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 do. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get rid of Kester 1. Uh, these are all the exact same. Uh, da da da. I'll keep the original armor because it's cool. But it's, it's, it is a wetsuit, but like, it's still cool. Okay, let's go with the ready. Let's use the pistol to start off with, though, I think. This is not a pistol, this is a sniper rifle, Shepard. Okay. Uh, this is the assault. Wait, why am I using two assault rifles? Um. And then I swap to... Okay, so that's the assault rifle. Then when I do this, what do I swap to? The sniper. Okay, yeah, this works, this works, this works, this works. Okay. How did they not know that we boarded this? <laughs> uh, oh, wait, hang on, I might have even better armor. Is that a, is that a possibility? Uh, actually, I should probably give it to Ashley. Um, what does this look like? Oh damn, that's actually pretty badass, but it's much worse than, uh... It's much worse than... Wait, you can wear the... Ah, oh, yeah, you can wear the Mass Effect armor as well. Okay, that's interesting. Uh... Yeah, why is all the arm? Oh, it is more shields, but I, I think the normal damage is probably the best thing to go for. I don't see anyone. Oh, this is cool. This is like a fucking stealth operation. Can we stealth? What is the melee button again? Okay, circle. Okay. Uh-oh. Shit. Wait, oh god, I don't wanna... Oh. Whoa, okay. This looks like it's going to be difficult. Holy shit. Okay. We have three minutes. Three minutes is all we need, though. Three minutes is all we need. Uh, okay. As far as I can tell, there's no sprint button in this either, so... Let's go, I guess. We're going... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Shit, 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 shit. Oh no, it's fine, it's fine. I didn't end up doing that anyway. Okay. Ow, 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 ow. I'm stuck, I am stuck, I am stuck. Okay, got you. Ow, fuck. Fucking hell. Shit. Uh. Shit. Won't get me next time. Okay, come on. Yes, 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 you probably will. In fact, I'm dying right now. Oh, wait, fuck. Oh, Jesus, it's just going from bad to worse. Fuck. I also can't regen yet for some reason. Okay, there we go. Wait, Ashley's dead! Wait, that doesn't kill you for the entire game, does it? Wait... Okay, hang on, I need to look that up. If, if your teammate dies, do they actually stay dead? Fuck, cause if that's... if that's... how that works, then uh... That's not good! Um... Wait, shit. Uh, why did it just look up Hugo Weaving? What? Okay. Uh, if your squad mate dies in Mass Effect, do they stay dead in battle? Oh, okay, 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 okay. You can you can revive them. Whew. Uh, they stay dead until you... Yeah, okay, cool, 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 cool. Okay, we don't need to be too worried then if they die in combat. It's just kind of like... Ah, okay, very good, very good, very good, very good. 
Okay, let's go. We can do this. We can do this. Speed run. Speed run. I have a bad feeling that I'm like severely under leveled for this. But uh, here we go. Here we go again. Okay, I think I got that. Oh wait, no, I didn't get you. What? Are you all still alive? What? I have... Okay, that was really weird. Please, let me shoot. Please, for the love of God, let me shoot. Why is Ashley did it? Why am I did Okay, yeah, I'm probably just under leveled for this. Maybe if it is possible, can I just come back here later? Can I just leave? Is that a thing I can do? Please tell me this doesn't fuck up the, the side quest. If we just fucking fly away. Did that just fuck up the side quest? Uh. Okay, no, we can still do that, okay. Ooh. Right, well, let's actually do an actual mission now, I'd say, because this is difficult. I'll remember to come back there. Okay, where else do we want to go? Uh, right, Novaria. What the fuck was the exit of this place, though? I don't remember this. As Wait, what? No, that's not Asgard, Asgard, is it? It can't be. There's no way. What are these places though, actually, just out of curiosity? I really hope this doesn't destroy that side quest. That's still really cool, it's a really interesting way of like hyperspeed. Um, or hyper lanes, I should say. Okay, I'm just going to uh, look at all these planets, because I actually have no idea where this is or what side quest or mission this is. Bohr is a huge hydrogen helium gas giant with over 90 moons. Its striking coloration is caused by the light of ionized hydrogen filtering through an upper cloud deck of sodium. The source of the ionization has not yet been confirmed, but Bohr's mass equal to 6 Jupiters and high temperature suggests it may be a small brown dwarf. A large gas giant that gained nearly enough mass to ignite into a small star. Interesting. There must have been a lot of science research that goes and went into this game. And I'm also curious, in the second, third Mass Effect, are we in like a different system with different planets? Or will they be just reusing the same planets the whole time? Because holy shit, there's a lot of them. Though Bohr's deep gravity well makes mining operations difficult, it is the only gas giant in the system that hydrogen needed for the local fuel cell industry, combined with the ever-present need for helium-3 fusion torch fuel, make it an economical to mine. Very interesting. Whoa, the day is only 8.8 .8 hours. Interesting. Um, this, it must be a mission of some sort, but... Terra Nova. Oh, Terra Nova was one of the Class 1 colonization prospects discovered by the first wave of Alliance surveys in 2150. Uh, it was the second human extrasolar colony and the first beyond the Karen mass relay. It currently has the highest population of any Alliance colony. Interesting. Uh, though, oh shit. Uh, though banded by harsh equatorial desert areas closer to the poles are temperate. The piece of development was modest until extensive deposits of platinum were discovered in the 2170s. This rare metal required in the clean burning of hydrogen fuel cells that power private vehicles attracted a platinum rush of immigrants and investments from throughout Alliance space. In the past 12 years, Terra Nova has seen a 30% rise of population and growth does not appear to be slowing. Interesting. Uh, what is tier then? Or tire tier. Tier is a com is tier is compositionally quite similar to Earth. However, it lies over four AU from Asgard and possesses uh, an atmosphere primarily composed of nitrogen and ethane. While a potential target for terraforming, the presence of this shirt sleeves habitable Terra Nova in the same system relegated relegated tier to a support role. Nearly a hundred corporations, human and alien, have constructed extensive tele. Wait, teleo, 
tele-operated mining, fucking hell, I couldn't read that, tele-operated mining, refining, and manufacturing facilities across the faces of Tyr. Combined with the platinum loads of Terra Nova, the resources they produce are driving development of the local hydrogen fuel cell industries. The Asgard system now supplies nearly 4% of the galactic market. Wow, that's a lot for like an entire galaxy. Loki. Okay, yeah, this is this. Oh, Tyr and Loki, yeah, why don't I get that? Yeah, uh, it's all Asgardian kind of legends. Loki is a small terrestrial world with little to recommend it. Uh, one hemisphere is largely covered by an ice cap and the other by craggy bal basilitic highlands. Basaltic, Jesus Christ. The rough, varied terrain suggests an ancient cataclysm caused significant damage to the world. This is seemingly reinforced by its unusually elliptical orbit, which reaches 6.5 AU at Peregrine and 7.1 AU at Abogi. Um, or Abogi. Penetrating scans of Loki's ice cap reveal a network of crisscrossing subterranean tunnels. Because some of the tunnels were surprisingly regular in shape and size, early expeditions looked for evidence of excavation. It was concluded that they formed by natural processes. Industry. In in fucking hell! Cyber, speak! Interesting. Loki's thin atmosphere is mainly composed of krypton and xenon. When it approaches Peregrine, frozen sulfur trioxide and dioxides can evaporate into clouds in the hemisphere facing Asgard. It would be kind of cool if this ended up being a really important planet, but like it's, it looks really like not important, then it could literally be like Loki. <laughs> like mischief. Uh, what is this? Uh, X57 is a metallic asteroid originally located at the trailing La Lagrange point of the gas giant Boar. Uh, with the increased development on Terra Nova, a new orbital port facility was necessary. Due to the shortage of funding, it was decided to mine out X57 using the recovered resources to finish out the interior of ha for habitation. The asteroid was decorated from Boar's orbit using fusion torches, allowing it to fall into the orbit of Terra Nova. Recently, communications with the engineering team on X57 have been lost. The fusion torches have reignited and the asteroid is ex is accelerating towards Terra Nova. That doesn't seem like something... Wait, hang on, I just need to check something. God damn! Why is everything just going, um... going weird? Do 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 Da, 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 da. I've, I just feel like I recognize hearing something like this. Yes, this is a DLC. Ah, interesting. I am going to wait and do that later, but I just need to remember where it is. Uh, oh, yes, there's another place here. Utopia. Let's travel to Utopia, then. I like all this exploration. There isn't. I'm probably missing a load of stuff, but like, <laughs> it's, it's cool. Okay, we'll start in the outer ring and move our way in. Xanadu. Uh, Xanadu's atmosphere is composed of methane and argon. Its frozen surface is mainly composed of potassium with deposits of calcium. Its location in the deep cold of the outer system and l its lack of any valuable resources have leave it little to recommend it. Okay, that is slightly depressing for uh, Xanadu, but uh, okay. Uh, this is the next planet. Nirvana! Nirvana. And Nirvana has a trace atmosphere of xenon and krypton. The surface is a mixed water of rice and iron oxides, with cryovolcanic plumes of potassium concentrated around the equatorial ridge. Nirvana has little of commercial or scientific interest, though a few geological research stations were constructed in the early 2160s. All have been shut down for years. The Alliance maintains an automated ice cracking station, which has quietly stockpiled a large amount of deuterium fuel f for use by the fleet. This is a real long shot, but in the teaser trailer for um, Mass Effect 4, which I did look at because I that was even before I even had any interest in playing Mass Effect. Um, I'm pretty sure. Maybe it was just when I started looking into Mass Effect. Um, there was a nice planet. I'm, I don't know if it'll be that planet, but uh, we'll have to see. I didn't understand any of the context of the trailer, but... Uh, uh, Zion is a hydrogen helium gas giant with even lar even larger than Jupiter. Uh, despite its deep gravity well and lethal radiation, it supports a small helium-3 mining industry. The reason is simple. As the only gas giant in the Utopia system, it is the only local source of fuel for Eden Prime's power stations and spaceports. Zion is 112 satellites ranging, ranging from captured asteroids to the moon of Asphodel, which is large enough to retain a thick atmosphere. 
can we go to Ashfordale by any chance? No, no, okay. Eden Prime. Oh, wait, isn't this where... Eden Prime, this is where we were at the beginning of the game, wasn't it? I think. Uh, this idyllic agrarian world was once was one of the first human colonies established beyond the Karen Mass Relay. Eden Prime's biosphere is unusually well suited for importation of Earth native life. This fertility drew heavy immigration and development by the Systems Alliance of various corporations. Today, Eden Prime is a model of sustainable organized development. The population is housed space efficient arcologies that tower over thousands of kilometers of green fields and orchards. Ah, so they build up so they don't ruin the planet. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I think I remember seeing those in the background. Arcadia. Uh, an unusually large terrestrial world, Arcadia has a dense atmosphere composed of nitrogen and helium. Its scorching hot surface is mainly composed of alkaline basalts, but metal deposits are plentiful. Though several spectacular examples of columnar basalt formation occur offer scenic beauty, Arcadia's hostile environment has precluded commercial development. Okay, so we have this system now uh, all checked out. Uh, so where is the next one that we have to go to? Uh, I can't remember which one we've actually looked at before. <laughs> um, oh god, I actually genuinely can't remember what we've explored. Uh, I don't think we've explored the Kepler Verge. Maybe. I don't think we have anyway. Uh, there's nothing over on the corners, I don't think... No. Okay, let's just go here and see what's in here. I'm just gonna spend, uh, probably for the rest of this, uh, maybe not the entire video, obviously, because that'll be a while. But just for the next little while, I'm just gonna explore all the other planets Message and see in. what's... Oh, shit! Patch it through. Oh, is this a mission? Fuck. Troubling information, Commander. We need your help. Someone what is it? killing former Alliance scientists. There have been four deaths in the past month. Uh, what did they work Former on? scientists. Sounds like someone has a project they'd like to keep secret. All yeah. four scientists worked on a classified project on a coos. There was a brutal massacre there years ago. Hmm. An entire unit was killed by Thresher Maws. It was classified okay. as a natural hazard, but the project dates coincide with the attacks. Uh, that sounds suspicious. That can't be a coincidence. There was one other scientist on the project, Dr. Wayne. I'm transmitting his last known coordinates. Good luck. Fifth lead out. Okay, well now we have another side quest, I believe. Uh, oh, I can't actually look at my thing to see if it is a side quest or a main mission, but I believe it's a side quest. So, is Azuki one of these? Is it not one of these? Oh, interesting. Okay, that's strange, if I'll be honest. Um, Klenkori is a rock and ice planet with an atmosphere composed of chlorine and argon. The frozen surface is mainly composed of potassium with deposits of iron. Klenkori is famously claimed by the eccentric Volus billionaire Kum Kumun Shoal. He claims that a vision of a higher being told him to seek on Klenkori and the lost crypts of the beings of light. These entities were supposedly created at the dawn of time to protect organic life from the synthetic machine devils. Shoal has been excavating on Klenkori's toxic surface for two decades at great expense. No government has valued the world enough to evict a small army of mercenaries. Okay. Uh, Matriarch's writing discovered scans of the planet Klenkori are filled at the cockpit of a Volus trading vessel. There are no signs of the rest of the ship, but the salvage team discovered one of the Matriarch Dalinga's writings in the ship systems. Okay. Sesmos. Whoa, this is a cool looking planet. Sesmos is an ice dwarf world, its surface composed almost entirely of frozen water. Normally a planetoid this small would not raise inclusion on the system's charts, but Sesmos' unusually large and beautiful ring of ice crystals has made it a popular subject for visual artists. The ring is the result of a glancing equatorial impact uh, which left a large trench and threw a great deal of melted water into the atmosphere. The rings are a temporary feature that will completely decay within a few thousand years. Interesting. Ontarom. Uh, though Ontarom's surface is uncomfortably hot, uh, its nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere and an abundant shallow seas make it an ideal candidate for habitation by most species. Unfortunately, uh, ah, shit. Uh, the orbital moon of Thonal has been slowly decaying since the system coalesced. Its proximity is beginning to have tidal effects, and its dynamo-like revolution through Ontarom's magnetic field is generating increasing powerful electrical storms. 
Uh, while some have suggested emplacement of a Mass Effect drives in an attempt to lighten the moon and correct its orbit, the scale of such a project, tens of thousands of drives costing enough to bankrupt the governments of all of the Citadel races, make it a pipe dream. A multiracial effort is underway to catalog and preserve the unique genetic diversity of Ontaram's vibrant Yogan biosphere. Ex Exogeny Corp uh, and Hayan Genomics pr represent the alliance's share in the, of the effort. Okay, well, I'm not going to go there yet until I figure out exactly what I have to do on that planet. Junk Row! Junk Row is a hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of chlorine and sodium in its upper atmosphere. Like Uranus in the Sol system, it is tipped on its side, its north pole facing the star Newton. Gas giant survey, the gas giant concentration of hydrogen. Okay, cool. Uh, exit. Wow, I got a lot of money from that apparently. <laughs> Uh, journal. Dead scientists. In the Kepler Verge. Yeah, okay, so I just have... Huh. I really want to beat this one, but I don't know if I... If it is literally because I just don't have enough, um... If I'm just not strong enough. It, it just might be like that. Can I go through everyone? Oh, no, it's just me. Okay, well. Um... I'll unlock shotguns, do one of those, and... Tactical armor, yes. I believe that is good. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that's cool. That's a cool helmet as well. Um, right. Let's go back into the map then. <laughs> uh, I just don't know what I'm supposed to do here. So I'm, I'm assuming that's for a side quest I haven't found yet. Maybe. Uh, okay, we looked at that one. I don't Massacre think we looked at this one. Oh no shit! More. Uh, we're just getting a load of cyclists. <laughs> Admiral Hackett here. We're getting reports Hello. of a marked increase in geth activity in the Skillian Verge. Ah. Surveillance drones have identified geth outposts on four different planets in the Armstrong cluster. We need someone to take them out. Uh, any more information? Any idea what they're after? Hard to say. They may be just gathering intel on us. Or maybe they're setting up staging grounds for hit-and-run attacks on human colonies. Or worse? It could be the first wave of an invasion. Let's hope not. We need someone to investigate this, Shepard. Finding well, I guess it'll have to be me. Top priority, but you've got experience fighting the Geth. You're the logical choice to take out these outposts. We're transmitting okay. all the locations of known Geth outposts in the Armstrong Cluster to the Normandy now. Admiral Hack it out. Okay, well now, um... They said the Skillian Verge, so... Is that gonna be one of these? Gagarin, da-da-da, Hong, Vamshi, no idea. We'll go from the left to the right, though. Let's travel! Oh, this is gonna be a lot of loading. Yeah, this entire episode is, for, like, is probably just gonna be... That little bit of exploring, the little bit of failing to do a hostage situation, then just looking at other planets. I don't mind this, I love this, but I'm sorry if you find this boring. But it's just cool to see all the different planets. Uh, Anturumgon is a small rock and ice planet with a trace atmosphere of methane and ethane. The frozen surface is mainly composed of carbon with deposits of calcium. Anturumgon has been used as a crude anchorage for terminus pirates for many years. The shells of temporary dwellings blasted by Alliance frigate and patrols dot the surface. But always the pirates return to the ground, their ships drive charges, chip out some water ice and trade slaves and stories. The deeper layers of Anturumgon's interior are semi-liquid slush due to the presence of methanol. It is thought that bacterium in this deep core create this natural antifreeze. Some species of Terminus pirate drill through the ice crust to recover this natural alcohol. Interesting. Uh, deposits of cobalt. Very good. Uh, this is the next planet. Sogelbris. 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 Uh, Sogelbris is a small terrestrial planet with a thin atmosphere of nitrogen and argon. The frigid surface is mainly composed of water ice, which can be plainly seen in the bottoms of the recent craters. The dark coloration of the surface is caused by a carbon and forest material pushed up from the denser core by cryovolcanic processes. Cryovolcanic is a, such a cool word. <laughs> uh, let's do Junthor. Um, wait, can I not survey that? There, it, Maybe I can, but... Uh, Junthor is a large terrestrial planet with a thick atmosphere of carbon dioxide and chlorine. 
The surface is mainly composed of aluminium with deposits of nickel. Surveyors found the ruins of a technical civilization near the equator, evidently the colony of an ancient spacefaring race. The ruins have subsided to almost nothing, merely wind-hollowed husks of, archae- of archaeologies and other megastructures. In the center of the ruins was a single column whose inscriptions defied translation for several centuries. When Asari linguists finally managed a translation, the elaborate relief carving said merely, Walk among uh, these works and know our greatness. The crude scratches on the base of the reverse side said, Monsters from the id. No idea, id? Is that like id softwares? Uh, Matriarch's writings discovered scans reveal the wreckage freighter uh, orbiting one of Junthor's smaller moons. A recon team found no signs of life, but they did recover one of Matriarch Dillinga's writings. Cool, no idea what we're going to get when we get all of them. If it's the same as the other one, we won't get anything. Ooh, uh, another landable place. Rayingri is a small, barren terrestrial world. While it possesses a reasonably temperate climate and number of useful resources, no mining corporation is willing to risk investment. A rogue planetoid dubbed Nevats by the initial Solarian Surveyor Team entered the system approximately 10,000 years ago and was trapped in a decaying orbit around Rayingri. Uh, it is nearing the end of its slow spiral inwards. Earthquakes and cyclonic windstorms are increasingly common on the Rayingri. Uh, within a few hundred years, the planet will rip each other apart. Some Asari travel consortiums have already announced sponsorship of cruises to observe the spectacle. Very interesting. Um, I think this is the last planet here. Pressa. Uh, Pressa is a relatively small hydrogen helium gas giant with large amounts of hydrocarbons in the middle layers of the atmosphere. When the Krogan rebellions ended three million millennia ago, the Turian chief of naval operations, a distinguished soldier named Mer Kuri, declared his immediate retirement. He disappeared into what was then uncharted territory. It was only 200 years ago that a ship was found on the surface of Press's largest moon. It had landed gently and had been deliberately shut down. Of Admiral Mer Kuri, however, no trace was ever found. Very interesting. Uh, let's go to Tereshkova. So each one of these has to have a Mass Effect relay, I'm pretty sure. I think that's how the world works, or like space travel in this world works. Let's go bottom up this time. Whoa, that looks cool. Hun Salra is a small hydrogen helium gas giant. It has unusually large amounts of nitrogen in the upper atmosphere, which glow purple when ionized by the solar wind. Hun Salra's convenience as a place to dump drive charge has left its orbit littered with debris dumped overboard by visiting crews. Oh, that's not good. Uh, wait. Aha, there is a secret thing. Can I not scan? Whoa. Have I missed all of these? A dark asteroid of mixed materials? Medallion recovered. While scanning the asteroid field in the Tereshkova system, you picked up some anomalous readings after some daring maneuvering by Joker. That's so cool. I love these little stories. A small team was able to recover some debris of one of the larger rocks. Among the items discovered was a League of One medallion. Very cool. Now, I probably have been missing a load of those kind of things, but, uh, oh well, we'll go left and then down again. Antibar. Oh, another planet we can go to. Antibar is a cold terrestrial world with an atmosphere of methane and argon. Its frozen surface is mainly composed of iron with deposits of magnesium. The world has been noted as a possible target for long-term terraforming. If the atmosphere could be increased to thickness of Earth's, the global average temperature would rise by 10 degrees Celsius. Antibar's combination of low temperatures, high speed wind surface, wow, high speed surface winds and low visibility makes it dangerous to explore on foot. I wasn't planning on it, don't worry. Uh, Sol Marlon. Sol Marlon is one of Tereshkovska's two outer worlds, significantly removed from the rest of the system, and with unstable elliptical orbits, it is thought that they may have formed within 3 AU of the binary stars and were hurled outward due to the instability of such an orbit. Sol Marlon is a hydrogen helium gas giant with significant quantities of sodium in the upper atmosphere, giving it a distinct grey colour. Uh, Mawanor. Mawanor is the second of Tereshkovska's outer worlds. It is essentially a rock of unremarkable ores with some deposits of water ice, but no minerals of value. The frozen surface is composed of silica. Like the gas giant Sol Marlon, it is thought that Mawanor formed too close to Tereshkovska's stars and was thrown outwards by gravitational effects. Computer models suggest it, was eje- it will be ejected from the system in a few hundred thousand years. Interesting. Alright, there's two more in this system. Thegoose. <laughs> Thegoose. 
If the goose is a terrestrial world with an atmosphere of chlorine and krypton, the surface is mainly composed of silicates of, with deposits of carbon. The goose is a low mass for its size and it is tidally locked to the star Tereshkovka A. The temperature difference between the sunward hot pole and the dark side cold pole creates constant gale force winds across the terminator. Do 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 do. Uh, I discovered Mercury. Very cool. Uh, Patamar Patamalrus. Patamalrus atmosphere. Patamalrus's atmosphere is very similar to Venus in terms of pressure and temperature. Unlike Venus, however, Patamalrus atmosphere has a significant quantity of oxygen, both free and bound in the silver dioxides. The surface is largely composed of magnesia with deposits of carbon. It is possible, if unlikely, that simple life may be developing on Patamalrus. Computer modeling suggests that the powerful solar winds from the Tereshkovka stars will blow off Patamalrus's atmosphere in a few million years, lowering the temperature on the surface to the negative 70s. Okay. And uh, iridium. Interesting, 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 interesting. Okay, now we're going to Hong. Let us travel to Hong and see what planets they have there. God, I, I am really apologizing uh, for the kind of slight boredom <laughs> that may be here, but I just really find all this fascinating. And uh, Tregear. Tregear is a tiny ice dwarf with a trace atmosphere of xenon and krypton. The frozen surface is mainly composed of water, ice, and ammonia. Cryovolcanic processes are gradually repaving the surface with sheets of fresh ice. Uh, lithium? Interesting. So the next one is here. Uh, Thashaka. Thashaka is a standard hydrogen helium gas giant. In the past, it was often used as a drive discharge point for pirates raiding human settlements from the terminus systems. In 2178, the Alliance set up a network of covert sensing devices on Thashaka's, mo Thashaka's moons. Recordings of pirate FTL exit vectors over the course of six months led the Alliance Navy to eight major pirate anchorages. Since the Thashaka raids, no ships from the terminus have been reported in the Hong system. Well, that makes sense. That's a kind of smart move. Matar! Matar is a terrestrial planet. Oh, there is uh, no A there. Spelling mistake. Uh, Matar is a terrestrial planet with a thick atmosphere composed of nitrogen and krypton. Its frigid surface is mainly composed of sodium oxide with deposits of copper. B because of noxious surface gases, explorers are warned to use extreme caution. Matar lacks a magnetic field. This makes it useless, useless for discharging FTL drive cores in orbit. Uh, the energetic particulars particles of solar wind from Hong strike the upper atmosphere directly ionizing the krypton. This gives the planet its distinctive minty green white hue. Survey. Major X ray discovered. Scans of Matar revealed debris from a destroyed Asari freighter. Further scans uncovered a body which was brought on board. Dr. Chuck was examined this, but it learned nothing about its origins. Among the Asari's personal effects, however, was one of the Matria Dillinger's writings. Very interesting. Well, we're finding all those, at least. Kasbin. Oh, we can land here. Kasbin is a classic pre-garden terrestrial world, with conditions similar to those of Earth millions of years ago. Its hot, humid atmosphere is mainly composed of nitrogen uh, and carbon dioxide. An increasing amount of the surface is covered by simple lichen and algae. Uh, should no one expect a calamity occur, these tiny plants will exchange the atmosphere to an Earth-like nitrogen-oxygen mix over the next few millennia. Due to its potential for future habit habitability and sapient life, Kasbin has been designated a sanctuary world by the Citadel Council. Landing, it's prohibited by a law. Uh, oh, and any disturbance of the fragile young ecosystem will result in harsh fines and imprisonment. At present, the planet is passing through a debris trail of a long period comet. So if we land there, we get fined. Okay, I don't think I have enough money to do that anyways. But uh, whenever we get a side quest to go there, hopefully, uh, we'll do that. And if it gets to a while where we haven't gotten side quests to go to certain places, I will just go there by myself, don't worry. Uh, Palmal is an enormous terrestrial planet with a very dense atmosphere of carbon dioxide and sodium. The surface is scorching hot and mainly composed of sodium oxides and deposits of nickel. Uh, there is evidence that Palmal was once covered in broad shallow seas. Should a probe ever be sent to the surface, a check for ancient fossil life might prove valuable. Very good. Now that is that one, and then we have this last one, and then we'll probably, once we explore Vamshi, this will probably end the video. Uh, and then next video we'll start with more uh, exploring of all the planets. Uh, Almos. Uh, Almos is a hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of sodium darkening its atmosphere. Very simple. Uh, Maji. 
Uh, oh, we got a land here. Magi orbits the Vamshi binary giant stars. Vamshi A is a blue star of spectral class A4111, which burns at half again the temperature of Sol. Vamshi B is an aging red giant of class M5111, uh, over 220 times the size of Sol. Magi is a thin now. Oh, wait, I'm only after realizing all these planets are probably different actual main story places as well. They're not just side quests. Uh, unless the rest of the campaign. Uh, it takes place in systems we haven't that aren't on the map yet, and maybe they get shown when you get there far. I don't know. Magi is a thin atmosphere of methane and carbon monoxide. The difference in temperature between the hemisphere facing the suns and the, the facility deep space causes constant wind, stirring the silica and sodium dust off the surface. Unsavory characters from the terminus systems occasionally use magi for forms of cruel sport, dumping slaves, hostages, quarreling shipmates, or even when bored, vicious animals on the surface. Uh, one must kill the other before they will be rescued from the lethal radiation of the giant stars. Well, shit, that's not good. I don't look forward to exploring a place with a lot of radiation. Uh, Pregle. Pregle. Pringle. Uh, Pringle is an enormous terrestrial world with an atmosphere of chlorine and ethane. Its surface is mainly composed of sulfur and with deposits of aluminium. No landing has ever been attempted. Oh! Interesting. Trian insignia recovered. While scanning the planet Pregel, you discovered several marker boys orbiting it. Chief Engineer Adams secured... I don't recognize that person. Secured some of the high-res optical images of the boys, which appear to have been neglected for some time. Each one was marked with the Baitiki... Baitika colony insignia. Well, that is very good. But for now... Uh, I think this will be the end of the video. So I really hope you all enjoyed. Uh, we'll be going through the rest of these places um, in the next video. And then we'll actually be going continuing with the story. Or doing that side quest again, we'll have to see. But um, thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. And roll out. Oh wait, hang on. <laughs> I'll wait until this is done. Every time we jump, there must just be like more side quests. Yeah, like open. Oh, um, that's quite a delay. Meantime, no idea. Lost in transit. These probes were built in a hurry after first contact. Um. So what? This is a problem. Why? When these probes were launched, we didn't have any idea who we were fighting. We didn't want to risk aliens examining our technology. Okay. The probe has a demo nuke built in. Oh, a shit. kiloton tactical fusion warhead. About equal to the bomb dropped on Hiroshima back in the 20th. If somebody finds that probe, tampers That's not it. good. You don't need me to finish, Commander. Uh, that's serious, all right. I understand this must be handled, but I don't have anyone trained to deal with this sort of thing, sir. I know. I wouldn't ask if it wasn't important. These probes have been classified for 26 years. Oh. The Council will call fusion bomb booby traps dangerous and irresponsible. The Alliance would face <laughs> censure if they find this probe. I'm asking you because the Normandy can get on site quickly and quietly. It's in the Voyager cluster. It shouldn't be over there. It's in the Voyager cluster. That's the opposite side of the Alliance from Turian space. How did it get there? I don't know. It's possible someone recovered it safely and brought it there. It's also possible it got very badly lost. It could have been wandering the relay network since the war. We'll handle it. We'll get on it immediately, Admiral. And we'll be discreet. I appreciate that, Commander. Good luck. Fifth fleet out. Cool. Well, now, <laughs> thank you all so much for watching. We'll look into that one in the next video. Goodbye, and roll out. <laughs>